The first station. Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests with the elders and scribes and the whole council held a consultation, and they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. And they all condemned him and said, He deserves to die. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Then he handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. Mindful of the God alive in me, I tremble at Pilate's words. How did I come to this place of utter failure? I know that God is here present, even at this awful moment of condemnation. I want to escape, but I know that is not possible. I weep for all who are sentenced to die. The baby whose mother chooses abortion. The soldiers, mothers, fathers, and children when governments choose war. The guilty and innocent when the state chooses the death penalty. God did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Grateful for those who have the courage to choose life in all circumstances. We remember that we live in God. We invite the Spirit to guide our decisions and challenge our hearts. Let us pray for those who challenge you to choose life. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy mortal one, have mercy upon us. The second station, Jesus takes up his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus went out bearing his own cross to the place called the skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. Like a lamb, he was led to the slaughter. And like a sheep that before its shearer is mute, so he opened not his mouth. Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Life has tested me in many ways. I feel my strength being drained from me. I am not sure I can continue. I know the pain of losing my friends. I mourn for those who know weakness and ill health and the sadness of loneliness and old age. Too often people blame my God for their sufferings. They think that the God who loves them also sends them crosses to bear. They fail to see that my God is our God he is here with us, embracing us and helping us grow. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken. Remembering the sacred presence, we believe even though we do not see. We carry burdens, trusting that the divine breath within gives us power and strength. In silence, pray for those who are carrying heavy burdens at this time. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose beloved Son willingly endured the agony and shame of the cross for our redemption, give us courage to take up our cross and follow him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Holy God, 
Holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The third station. Jesus falls for the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. I tried so hard to continue, but I could not go on. My heart is broken. I fail to convince people that God loved them. I understand when disappointment and frustration disturb your soul. I understand why you feel like quitting. Remember that you live and move in God. Whenever you feel defeated, I am with you. I will raise you up and we will continue our journey together. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Inspired by Jesus, who trusted in God even when he was crushed by misunderstanding and disbelief, we commit ourselves to remain faithful to the dreams and hopes of the Spirit for our world. In silence, pray for those who are suffering failure, defeat, misunderstanding or disappointment. Let us pray. O oh God, you know us to be set in the midst of so many and great dangers that by reason of the frailty of our nature, we cannot always stand upright. Grant us such strength and protection as may support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, Holy Immortal One, have mercy upon us. The Fourth Station Jesus meets his afflicted mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. To what can I liken you? To what can I compare you, O daughter of Jerusalem? What likeness can I use to comfort you? O virgin daughter of Zion, for vast as the sea is your ruin. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of mourning shall be ended. I can barely look into the agonized eyes of my mother. I do not want her to see me this way. I know she desires to take my place. Loving and being loved bring suffering to us both. Yet we would not have it any other way. That's how I love you too. I am with you when you cry, when you are in pain, when you feel helpless. A sword will pierce your own soul also and fill your heart with bitter pain. Because Jesus suffered, we know that as his followers, we will not be spared. We pray that his companionship and example will strengthen us as we walk with those we love. In silence, pray for those you love who are suffering pain or loss. Let us pray. O oh God, who will that in the passion of your Son, a sword of grief should pierce the soul of the Blessed Virgin Mary, his mother. Mercifully grant that your church, having shared with her in his passion, may be made worthy to share in the joys of his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. 
Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The fifth station. The cross is laid on Simon of Cyrene. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As they led Jesus away, they came upon a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, who was coming in from the country and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I notice that Simon is being coerced into helping me. Nevertheless, I am grateful. As I struggle to continue walking, I notice that his attitude begins to change. My cross seems to become lighter, and I realize that it is because of his effort to carry more of it. When you are not enthusiastic about helping others, I want you to remember that I appreciate the smallest gesture of kindness. I hope that, like Simon, you will discover that service, no matter how minimal, will produce a new joy within you. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Recalling how Simon became a consoling support for Jesus, we are mindful of the gift we can be to others. We marvel that even in our weakest moments, we can be a treasure for someone. In silence, pray for those who serve others, especially those who sacrifice their own comfort to do so. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son came not to be served, but to serve. Bless all who, following in his steps, give themselves to the service of others, that with wisdom, patience, and courage, they may minister in his name to the suffering, the friendless, and the needy. For the love of him who laid down his life for us, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Sixth Station Veronica wipes Jesus' face. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We have seen him without beauty or majesty, with no looks to attract our eyes, he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hid their faces. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. His appearance was so marred, beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of the children of men. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole, and with his stripes we are healed. I see the brave Veronica break away from the crowd and come toward me with her towel. She does not care about the whispers or disapproving stares. I see tears in her eyes as she lifts the towel to my face. I praise your compassion when you respond to the suffering around you. I congratulate you when you are strong against those who try to pressure you to abandon your conscience in order to give in to the popular or majority opinion. I applaud you when you stand for truth, even if you must stand alone. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. We give thanks for those women and men who have been examples of courage when all around them have tried to convince them to compromise their beliefs. We are sorry for the times we have given in to our fears. 
in silence, pray for those who do the right thing, trusting that their actions will make visible the reign of God. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Seventh Station Jesus Falls a Second Time We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. As I fall again, I am tormented by my failure. Where did I go wrong? Why was I betrayed by one of my own? Will anyone remember what I tried to teach them? When you encounter the rejects of the world, remember that God sees their hearts. I understand why they fall again and again. Some of them have never known love or praise support or friendship and i also understand when you fail to be the person you want to be never forget that i love you but as for me i am a womb and no man scorned by all and despised by people remembering god is present even in our darkness and wrongdoing we forgive ourselves and others for the harm and injustices done by us and to us. In silence, pray for those who have hurt you and allow God's Spirit to heal you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature, and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Eighth Station Jesus meets the woman of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. There followed after Jesus a great multitude of people, and among them were women who bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. The men with whom I had shared so much have abandoned me, but these women weep openly for me. Their caring and compassion confirm the truth that we are connected. Pain and sorrow are common bonds. I mourn for them as they long to see the day when we live as brothers and sisters. They realize that in God's reign, we must work together as equals, no one lording power over another. They have believed my message and realize the cost of being faithful to the truth. Those who are sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Convinced by the example of Jesus who removed divisions among peoples, we pray to be open to the Spirit's work in everyone. In silence, pray for those who accept the challenge to speak of our communion with each other. Let us pray. 
Teach your church, O oh Lord, to mourn the sins of which it is guilty, and to repent and forsake them, that by your pardoning grace, the results of our iniquities may not be visited upon our children and our children's children. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Ninth Station Jesus Falls a Third Time We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. I am the man who has seen affliction under the rod of his wrath. He has driven and brought me into the darkness without any light. He has besieged me and enveloped me with bitterness and tribulation. He has made me dwell in darkness like the dead of a long ago. Do I call and cry for help? He shuts out my prayer. He has made my teeth grind on gravel and made me cower in ashes. Remember, O Lord, my affliction and bitterness, the wormwood and the gall. The soldiers are impatient with me as I fall again. It would be easier to lie here. It would be easier to quit. One good have I accomplished, but somehow I know I must go on. I struggle to stand. I realize I am not alone. Whenever life tests you to the point of giving up, think of me. I will stay with you as you wrestle with doubt, despair, or hopelessness. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its sharers is mute, so he opened not his mouth. Like us, Jesus found strength in God's power in his life. We trust that when all seems lost in our life, we will rely on the same power to enable us to continue walking in faith. In silence, pray for those who may be ready to give in to despair. Let us pray. O oh God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ, that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Tent Station Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. When they came to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink, mingled with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And they divided his garments among them by casting lots. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, they cast lots for my clothing. Not only is the pain excruciating as they pull off my clothes, I am humiliated as the onlookers stare at my nakedness. Some mock me, others sneer, but these, too, are loved by my God. Will they ever understand? When your dignity is attacked and when others try to shame you for your faith, do not worry about your reputation. Do not be concerned when others ridicule your efforts to love both friend and enemy. They gave me all to eat. And when I am thirsty, they gave me vinegar to drink. Joyful in the freedom that Jesus taught us, we pledge to treat all people as temples of God, treasures in earthen vessels. In silence, pray for those who suffer disgrace or discrimination because of intolerance, prejudice, or arrogance. Let us pray. Lord God, whose blessed Son or Saviour gave his body to be whipped 
and his face to be spit upon. Give us grace to accept joyfully the sufferings of the present time, confident of the glory that shall be revealed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Eleventh Station Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. When they came to the place which is called the skull, there they crucified him, and with him they crucified two criminals, one on the right, the other on the left, and Jesus between them. And the scripture was fulfilled which says, He was numbered with the transgressors. The reality of my dying is confirmed with every explosion of agony as the hammer pounds each nail. I cannot escape. How did I become such a threat to the authorities? Yes, I had crowds listening to me, but I taught them only about a loving God and how to respond to that love by caring for others. Do you find it perplexing that some people like the security of many rules rather than the refuge of a loving God. I think that I upset those who were in charge because I healed on the Sabbath. I allowed a woman to wash my feet. Those in power must have feared that I would take away all their followers. They pierce my hands and my feet. They stare and gloat over me. Because Jesus wanted to free people from fear and work to bring about a new reign of God, they judged him a traitor to their tradition. May we learn to live with confidence in our loving God where we meet unjustified criticism and are wrongly convicted. In silence, pray for those who are silenced for their vision and censored for their pursuit of truth. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring to those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, Holy Immortal One, have mercy upon us. The Twelfth Station Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And when Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And then, crying with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And he bowed his head and handed over his spirit. I look down and see my mother being comforted by John. I hear the convicts on either side of me. The crowd is yelling with satisfaction as they notice that I am suffocating. Oh God, my God, where are you? Why have you abandoned me? I hear the jeers, the mocking and the laughing. All goes dark around me. I forgive, I forgive, I still believe Though all seems lost, I still trust, I am dead. The soldier plunges his sword into my side. Let us pause and reflect in silence.
Christ for us became obedient unto death, even that on a cross. Although he was tested by darkness and deprived of God's consolation, Jesus died trusting in God's presence. Because we are the body of Christ, we believe what cannot be seen. We hope for a new life. We forgive what is unforgivable. In silence, pray for those who are dying at this moment. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The thirteenth station. The body of Jesus is placed in the arms of his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. All you who pass by, behold and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow. My eyes are spent with weeping, my soul is in tumult. My heart is poured out in grief because of the downfall of my people. Do not call me Naomi, which means pleasant. Call me Mara, which means bitter. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. My mother's heart is breaking as she holds my lifeless body on her lap. Her grief numbs her faith that I am alive in God. Her grief does not allow her to rejoice that I am with her. Tears stream from her eyes as her mind replays images from my childhood. As her shoulders begin to tremble with her sobs, I put my arms around her. I will never leave you, I tell her. You will see me again. We will always be together. Her tears run down her cheeks and she has none to comfort her. Reflecting on the death of Jesus and his mother's sorrow, we gain strength and learn to live again. With our wounded hearts, so we discover again how we are one with all who suffer the anguish of loss. In silence, pray for those who are grieving. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by your death you took away the sting of death. Grant to us, your servants, so to follow in faith where you have led the way, that we may at length fall asleep peacefully in you and wake up in your likeness for your tender mercy's sake. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Lent is the period of 40 days and 40 nights before Easter. Lent celebrates the 40 days and 40 nights that Jesus was in the desert fighting temptation from Satan. Jesus went to the desert after being baptized to reflect. He was led there by the Holy Spirit who sent him to see how well he resisted temptation. To me, Lent is a time to reflect and become self-aware, which would help me realize where I'm going wrong in life. By giving up something during this period, whether it be a meal or a habit, I'll be trying my hardest not to be enticed by the other side. When I was younger, I thought Lent was just us Christians finding a way to repay Jesus for dying for our sins before Easter. I'd usually take part in Lent by giving up snacks. As I got older, I realized that this 40-day period of praying, fasting, and almsgiving was done as a test on ourselves to mirror Jesus and move forward in his likeness. I now use Lent to practice self-control and to uplift my spiritual well-being. In the past, I would usually give up an object that is materialistic. 
Now, I try to cleanse my spirit by being more positive and finding ways to manage my temper. This year, I intend on observing Lent by giving up meat on certain days of the week, but most importantly, by becoming a more peaceful and calmer person. God gave us the freedom of choice and the ability to make the right ones all year round. But during this specific time, I'll be focusing even more on trying to be the best child of God I can be. As a young person, Lent can benefit you by allowing you to give yourselves time to take a break and rest from our hectic lives. During these breaks, you can take time to enjoy nature around you and absorb God's beautiful creation while being thankful for it. Observing Lent will help us to become more in tune with our spirituality. During my reflections on Lent, I came up with some good habits to practice during Lent using Lent as an acronym. L. Love. Love God with all your heart and mind because he sacrificed his son for us and love your neighbors as yourself. Are we living lives of love? E. Energize. Use this 40-day period to re-energize and revive your commitment to being a doer of the Word of God. What can we do differently to be better to be servants of God? And nurture. Nurture the habit of self-denial and self-sacrifice that would allow you to focus more on God. What are we giving up for Lent? What about giving food like meat and sweets? What about giving up negative emotions like anger and worrying? T. Time, talent and treasure. Give more of your time, talent and treasure in ways that will honor and serve God and benefit the church community. Are we generous enough with the resources that God has given us? Nations of the Cross is a Lenten devotion that offers witness to Jesus' passion and death. There are 14 stations of the cross. Today I will recount the first one being, Jesus is condemned to death. Jesus was sent to be crucified by Pontius Pilate, who was a Roman governor over Judea. He encountered Jesus, who he found to be guiltless and have no fault. Jesus was arrested after performing the miracle of raising Lazarus from the dead. The Jewish leadership had been plotting to get rid of Jesus for years prior. They were envious of his following and they were afraid that Jesus would gather too large a following which might bring the Roman authorities down on the nation, causing them to lose their positions. There are several recorded plots against him, so they took this as an opportunity to detain him. There was a warrant sent out saying, Wanted. Jesus of Nazareth. He shall be stoned because he has practiced sorcery and enticed Israel into apostasy. Anyone who can say anything in his favor, let him come forward and plead on his behalf. After his arrest, they decided upon crucifixion. Pilate tried to release Jesus. He even offers another prisoner named Barabbas to take Jesus' place and even gives Jesus a severe beating to please the crowd. But they had their mind made up. Either you kill Jesus, or you are no friend of Caesar's. He did end up giving in and allowing them to crucify Jesus, washing his hands of any blood that would have gotten on him during the beating. This station reminds me of the first quarter of the Apostles' Creed prayer, which reads as follows. The Apostles' Creed I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate. We must remember that Jesus' condemnation resulted in God sacrificing His only Son so that we would not perish but have everlasting life. The movies depicting the Stations of the Cross are sometimes painful to watch, but reminds us of His love for us and the importance of obedience to God's word and trust in Him in every situation.
Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Ooh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when he rose up from the dead? Were you there when he rose up from the dead? Oh, sometimes it causes me to shout hallelujah were you there when he rose up from the dead in the second station of the cross jesus is made to bear the cross on which he would be crucified as said like a lamb, he was led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before his shearers is mute, so he opened not his mouth. Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings, which was said in the Way of the Cross booklet. In Jesus' case, being led to the slaughter was him carrying the cross, which was used for his death by crucifixion. Jesus was the worthy lamb who was slain to receive all these great things. Because he stayed true to his Father in heaven, he was able to perform miracles. He was risen from the dead, gained his everlasting life, and is seated at the right hand of God. To me, it represents the weight or heaviness of all the crosses we have to bear. It reminds us that because of his love for us, he carried the cross to save us from our sins. We too must not always look at our crosses as too burdensome, but see how much we can bear for the love of others by helping them no matter if it is wearing us down. Ask God for the strength to help us not to give up, but to persevere for the goodness of God. In our perseverance, because of God's grace and mercy, He will help us along the way. 
So even if the road seems long, when troubles come, remember Jesus' suffering gives us hope that with God no burden is too heavy to carry. Just trust in Him to help us lighten them. For example, when we have millions of assignments to complete by a certain time, or when we have exams that we need to study for, we always get stressed and we never look to God and ask Him for help. We always complain and say that it's too much and we always stress ourselves out. But when Jesus was carrying his burden, which was his cross, he did not give up. He fell many times, but he did not give up. So we should not as well. We should always look to God and ask for help when necessary. What is Lent? Lent is a church season that lasts for 40 days. Lent begins on Ash Wednesday and ends on Holy Thursday. During Lent, Christians try to grow closer to Christ by repenting of their sins and reflecting on their lives, also fasting, not just on food, but regular habits that they would like to try to stop and prepare for Jesus' death and resurrection. Lent is a time to reflect. Jesus' bearing the cross is also a reminder that he expects us to surrender to him all our desires and ambitions. Our happiness should be as a result of following his word and not our own. I, my advice to people would be that fasting and breaking of habits is not just for the period of Lent. Lent is to, I would say, help you do it along the way is not just for the period of time but it would also help with after and to practice continuing to do so and when you do these things do it with an open mind not just for the sake of it but do it because you want to do it lent is more about recognizing and embracing one's mortality and acknowledging the sinfulness that marks earthly life and since we believe that jesus's resurrection foreshadows the resurrection and renewal of the whole world at the end of days lent is a time to turn away from sin mourn death and brokenness and anticipate a day when the broken world will be healed meaning that it is a time to give ourselves to God, to be more vulnerable, to ask God for forgiveness, to not be stubborn, and to have faith that this world would be what it once was. So the next time you hear about Lent, don't just think about fasting. Think about giving yourself to God, giving Him time, letting Him into our hearts, and having a sound mind. Don't let the burdens wear you down. Always look to God for help.